Greetings everyone, this is Plato from PlatoJewelry.com. I'm a jewelry designer and have been a luxury business professional for the past 20 years. And today we're going to discuss on how to buy a diamond ring. So, let's assume you start your journey in the world of diamonds and you have a budget in mind and you want to get the best possible diamond with your given budget. Or, you don't have a budget in mind, but you still want to get the best diamond your money can buy. Or you went to your local jewelry store and your buddy there showed you a couple of rings and tried to convince you to buy one of them and you know, like, this is beautiful, but you still wanted to know more about it, so you to be ready and uh, confident to pull the trigger. Anyway, whatever the case might be, you're in the right place because we're about to make the long diamond story short. And in order to make that story short, we need to discuss about some tools diamond business professionals use in order to categorize, evaluate, and compare diamonds. Um, they're very known to us as the four C's. Color, cut, clarity, and card weight of a diamond. So, we are going to discuss everything you need to know about the four C's, but there is more to that. We're also going to discuss about how by maxing out in some of these four C's and cutting back in some others, you can get the best diamond possible with your given budget. So without further ado, let's discuss about the four C's. So the first of these four C's is the color. The color is the most popular one and it's most heavily discussed, like everybody wants to get the best color. But is that the case? So in the GAA color scale system, the whitest diamonds are the D diamonds and D stands for the best color in the scale. Now, when we're talking about white diamonds, we're talking about colorless diamonds, to be honest, because diamonds are not white, diamonds are actually colorless. Then we follow the alphabet, like D stands for the best, we go for E, F, G, H, I, and so on and so forth. Now, the first three letters come in the same group, like D, E, F diamonds, we call them colorless. Now, G, H, I, and J diamonds, we call them near colorless. And then uh, we go to faint and very light for, um, for the rest. Now, when we go to faint and very light, the diamonds are already showing some yellow um, color to them. So we're not talking about colorless diamonds anymore because they're already getting yellow. You might think like, hey, I don't want a yellow diamond. I want a white diamond. And probably it's a bad thing when we go down to that scale to a letters like uh, let's say I or J or you know maybe K. So uh, is it a bad thing? Well, the first thing you need to think about and the first choice you have to make is what color of gold are you going to use in your ring? If you're going for a yellow uh, uh, gold ring, then spending money on a D diamond, it's actually a waste of money because you're putting something colorless next to a yellow um, source of color. So you're actually throwing your money away. Uh, and at this point, I have to tell you that if I would make a diamond, a diamond ring for myself and I would choose yellow gold, I would probably go with an eye diamond. And I'm saying that because an eye diamond um, set it in yellow gold will be probably um, the same like a D color diamond set it in yellow gold because of all that color that sits underneath uh, that D colorless diamond that will make it look like uh, like an eye diamond. So there you go. This is your first tip. When you when you choose to buy um, yellow or even rose gold, don't spend money to get higher on that list because it won't make any uh, any difference for you. Stay from probably um, let's let's say uh, a J, an I. So roughly, I would go H to I. Uh, in color and then I would um, save that money from not spending it to buy a D or an E or an F diamond to max out some other specifications that are more important. So let's summarize. D stands for the best color out there which is the most white or the most colorless and then the color scale follows the alphabet. If you're going for a white gold uh, or platinum diamond ring then stay high in that list. You don't need the D, an E or an F. I think G is a very um, good color and is the sweet spot in terms of price and whiteness. 
if you're going for a, for a yellow gold uh, ring or a rose gold ring, uh, go lower and take my word for it, you, you won't regret it, go for an 8 or a 9. Now, the second most popular C is the card weight. And there's a lot of discussion about how many cards is your diamond, I want a half card diamond, a two or four card diamond, so on and so forth. But what is a carat? So although we tend to think about cards uh, as size of, of diamonds, it's actually the weight of the diamond. And there's a formula, you divide the card weight by five and then you get how many grams your diamond is. So one card would be 0.2 grams. Now, when we're thinking about card weight, we're actually thinking about size. And uh, the diameter of a half, half a card diamond, for example, would be five millimeters. One card would go for six and a half millimeters. Like two cards would go for about eight millimeters. So roughly, when we think about the card weight of a diamond, we're actually thinking about the size of a diamond. And um, I, will, I will show a chart uh, in this video so you can actually kind of understand of uh, what would be the, the actual dimension of, of the diamond in your finger. Now, card weight is, is something you, you, you have to figure out by yourself. It's uh, a personal preference and there's no guide to it. Is you know, um, how big or how small you want the diamond to look on your finger. And it's also a matter of proportions. And that leaves us with only two specifications to discuss. One being the clarity and the second one being the cut. And in my humble opinion, the cut is the most important one out of the four C's we're going to discuss at last. So now let's discuss about clarity. So let's discuss about the GA clarity scale. We have the flawless diamonds, which are flawless both inside and outside. So we have absolutely no flaws um, outside of the diamond and also internally. Uh, we have the IF diamonds, which are internally flawless diamonds. So we might have some flaws on the outside, but internally they are completely flawless. We have the very, very slightly included diamonds, the VVS1 and VVS2 diamonds. Um, we have the very slightly included diamonds, the VS1 and the VS2 diamonds. Then we have the slightly, slightly included diamonds, SI1 and SI2 diamonds. Then included diamonds like 1, I1, I2 and I3, and the list goes on. Now, clarity is this one C we're going to heavily manipulate in order to reach um, to the desired price range we're looking for. So, tip number four. If you have no budget and money is not an issue, go for a flawless diamond because why not? But if budget is an issue and you're trying to, uh, to keep your cost low in order for you to get the best possible size and the best possible color, then I would go probably for an SI1 or an SI2 diamond because it's really, really hard to see any inclusions um, on those diamonds. And if you go for a you know, you know, less included diamond, it will make absolutely no difference. Take my word for it. You know, you're not gonna be able to see any inclusions with uh, bare eyes um, uh, so, so small in a so, so small uh, surface. So go for an SI1, go for an SI2, save uh, money on that category in order for you to be able to get the best possible diamond you're looking for. And now let's finally discuss about cut. Cut has absolutely everything to do with sparkle. Yes, you heard well, color doesn't make um, a diamond more sparkly. Um, clarity doesn't make a diamond to sparkle more. Nothing else makes a diamond sparkle more than cut. And uh, in cut, we have, uh, again, uh, the GIA uh, cut scale, which is uh, excellent, very good, uh, good, fair, uh, poor, and so on and so forth. But we're not going to discuss any grades here. Uh, my advice and what I'm doing when I'm buying diamonds for myself or uh, for friends or family, uh, in cut, stay absolutely in the excellent um, range. I'm going to discuss also uh, a fifth hidden uh, spec that will help you, uh, you know, manage your budget. But you want the cut to be absolutely excellent. So at this point, we need to discuss about three more specifications before we end this video. 
and they're no other than polys, symmetry, and fluorescence. Um, it's surprising to me that a lot of diamond dealers are not talking about them. They're very important. Uh, you want your polys to be excellent. Um, you want your symmetry to be also excellent because there's no point of getting, uh, you know, the, the specs right. If your symmetry is not right, you want a sparkle and that fire to come out of your diamond. And now there is um, that last spec that it's called fluorescence. And we're going to uh, actually explain what fluorescence is because it's really important. Fluorescence is the intensity of a colored glow that is usually blue when uh, the diamond is exposed to UV light. Um, and um, you can go higher in that spec if you want to lower your cost because there are very, very rare um, situations and circumstances that your diamond is going to be exposed in, in a UV light and that glow is going to be visible. So as we're moving towards the end, let's take a look in the GIA report um, and see how it looks like, see how you read it and how you verify it's real. Uh, now, uh, in this case, we have this report. It's from January 1st, 2014. Um, it's going to have a GIA, GIA report number. It's the second thing you're going to see. Um, then we have the shape and cutting style of our diamond. Uh, in this case, it's a round brilliant diamond. It's, you know, the most common uh, diamond out there. Um, we have the card weight, as we discussed. This diamond in this report is 1.01 uh, carat. Um, if you remember what we discussed in this video, it's going to be around 6.5 millimeters wide in diameter. Uh, so you already have an idea of how big the diamond in front of you should be. Uh, the clarity grade is uh, SI1. If you also remember um, how we uh, discussed about clarity is slightly included one. It's a pretty good um, uh, inclusion. You're not going to be able to see um, much of... Um, uh, you know, uh, many inclusions actually because uh, as we discussed uh, with the bare eye is really hard to see. The cut grade is excellent, is what we recommend it to be. Uh, the polish is excellent, the symmetry is also excellent and this particular one has absolutely no fluorescence. So has um, uh, no colored glow uh, under UV, uh, UV light. Uh, there's also an inscription in, in um, in the diamond that should be uh, the serial number of, of the diamond and with the loop of uh, times 15 you would be able to see it uh, around the griddle of the diamond um, and that um, report number so, should also come uh, online if you go to the GIA uh, website and you do the, the search of this particular uh, report so you can double check on the GIA uh, website type in, in the search uh, the report number, you should have uh, the exact same uh, number that your diamond inscription has. So this, this is how you know that your diamond is, um, uh, has a GAA certification. Now, some of the most common questions um, uh, people ask me is, what if I uh, save the money and I don't get a, a report? Is my uh, diamond going to be uh, less expensive? And the answer is yes, it's going to be less, less expensive, but you need to know what you're doing because believe me, it's, uh, it's really easy for you to get misled and buy something that is not what um, they told you it is. So uh, uh, consider diamonds mostly as investments because you can sell them or trade them back in the future. And in order for you to do that, you need a GIA report because nobody else is going to buy a diamond knowing by heart what it is or trust you, you know, like in the future. Uh, we sell diamonds uh, with GIA reports if they're over a, car a certain carat weight, but even um, in uh, 0.20 of a carat or 0.30 of a carat, of course, our diamonds have GIA reports. Another common question uh, I get a lot is, hey, I went on vacation in, you know, uh, Mykonos or Santorini or whatever island and uh, the jeweler showed me a pave ring and he told me it's two carats uh, but he never gave me a GA report like what's the story there so um, when you have a pave ring we actually have a lot of very very small stones that uh, the diamond setter is setting in our ring uh, now let's say a uh, pave ring has 500 uh, diamonds uh, then you need to get 500 GIA reports 
and that's a very very tough thing to do mind you uh the price of, of the ring is gonna go um sky high because you need to pay 500 GIA reports for uh, very very small rings and that is not possible uh, in most uh, cases not even GAA uh, certifies you know super small diamonds now a question after that is uh, what do I do like uh, and there's not much uh, to say in that question you need to know who you're buying for, uh, from you need to trust the store um, you need to be able to tell if they're legit uh, and um, you need to do your research before buying because uh, you know after um, after you go away uh, there's not much you can do actually uh, so you need to, uh, to have trust and to double check um, the diamond dealer you're working with so let's recap our video um, if you're going for a white gold ring then keep the color of your diamond around G you're gonna be fine Keep your clarity to SI1, SI2, it's going to be great. You're not going to be able to see any flaws. Um, uh, if you're going for uh, yellow gold or rose gold, then go for an I color or for a K color. There's no point of you paying for a D diamond since the gold is going to cast the color back to your diamond and it's going to look more yellow. So uh, stay in the I range or in the H range. Now, if you don't have a budget, don't mind about all of that get the best, best you can possibly can and enjoy it and be happy and smile because why not um, if you are on the budget uh, keep clarity to SI1 SI2 keep color in colored uh, gold to uh, H or I uh, in every case keep your cut to excellent and your symmetry and polish to, to excellent you can play also with fluorescence if you find yourself needed to uh, you know save um, that last amount of money to to boost some other specs so you can go higher in fluorescence you can go even strong fluorescence uh, in, in some specifications is actually uh, nicer um, the most impo important thing is get a report the fifth C that uh, we never discussed about is the most important and that's confidence stay on the confident side of, um, of the market uh, get what you paid for get it um, uh, certified and uh, this way you can easily sell it in the future you know and trade it back uh, or upgrade it at this point I want to thank you all for watching this video if you like the video you know what to do um, I hope you enjoyed the information I, I hope you enjoyed the video um, hit me up with any questions I can probably answer uh, stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next one